What's up guys, on this episode of the eBay E36 build, we're gonna be throwing on some eBay coilovers. Stay tuned. What's up guys? So first, before we even get installing these, I want to do a quick little talk about eBay coilovers in the BMW market. So when eBay coilovers became a thing, there was a ton, a ton of trash talk, a ton of you're gonna crash, ton of this nonsense. And so I had an E46 with H&R and Coney's on it. I then had an E30 uh, with a fully built ground, fully adjustable ground control suspension. So I know what $2,000 coilovers are. I fully understand. And for guys that track their cars, I still think that, you know, good name brand, well valved systems are really, they're worth the money. But for a car like this, where you're interested in things like stance, you're interested in things like just better handling than a blown crappy suspension, eBay coilovers are a wonderful thing. And for $250, they represent a ton of value for money. So let me kind of walk you through the design here. So this is a front, and so let's just start at the top. These came with fully adjustable camber plates. Um, they have a spherical bearing in them, which is uh, a nice premium feature. The thing is, something like a spherical bearing, right? Like if, if these are, are quality materials, they're gonna last and perform just as well as like three or $400 adjustable hats on their own. Um, if this is crap, it gets burnt up, then it's not gonna work very well and you're better off with, with rubber bushings. But basically, if you loosen these screws, you can adjust the amount of camber you have. And I'm gonna have it set to the factory amount uh, because I don't want to be all cambered out, but this does give you the option. Moving down, you have an aluminum anodized top hat, a steel retainer ring, and that is where your spring starts. And these springs are about 500 uh, pound foot springs. They're linear springs, they're not progressive. And of course you have a shock. Um, down here you have your bottom spring pad and then a lock collar for it, and then down here, you have another lock collar. And the reason you have that is because on these, these are just like the ground control ones or the ones that BC coil sells. This whole bottom assembly is actually adjustable. And while it makes it somewhat of a pain because you have to um, break all the bolts loose and basically do the whole suspension and do major height adjustments, it's a really clever design because that means that this, this part right here, the shock travel, is always the same. The problem with a lot of lowering kits is you basically drop the spring at the bottom and then you end up with a shock that can only move about half an inch or an inch and you end up blowing it out and then it rides like crap. This kit allows you to do major height adjustments without kind of uh, destroying your, your shocks and I really like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically measure the stock suspension when we remove it, set this height to about an inch underneath the overall length of the stock suspension and bolt it in and then you can do fine height adjustments you know a half an inch or a quarter inch using the lower spring perch without having to unbolt all of this so I mean we'll see how well it stands up just from a feel these feel really nice the shaft diameter is well sized and they feel like a quality product the rear shock assemblies um, these are also height adjustable you can release this lock ring and then adjust the height right here we're gonna set these to stock ride height because they're just shocks they feel good. They also have spherical um, rear shock mounts which are a nice feature. All new hardware everywhere so these are hopefully going to bolt in nicely and they have a nice solid rubber bump stop you can see right there um, which is another feature I like to see um, as, as kind of a quality product. The rear shocks uh, aren't coilovers. They actually uh, sit between the lower control arm. They have a lower perch, a beehive type spring um, and so this is also about 500 pounds uh, per inch and then it has this top hat and this top hat is adjustable this is how you adjust your height right height and I'll show you all this on the car later um, on the E36 it makes a lot of sense to put this at the top because it makes it easy to adjust uh, when the car is on jacks so if you put this on the bottom um, you may have a hard time getting in there with a spanner wrench uh, it just kind of depends generally you want to put these at the bottom but you don't have to and so on this car we're probably going to put them at the top and I dropped it a minute ago, but there's also a steel plate that goes here between the anodized aluminum and the steel spring. So, kind of a long-winded discussion, but I wanted you guys to understand the engineering that goes into these and what you're getting for your $250 uh, compared to like a $2,000 ground control kit. So next step is to get the wheels off the car and get all this stuff uh, going in there. So here we go with the wheel off. Um, 
just looking down here probably need new control arms as well at some point but it's not going to hinder our progress today this is what we're removing we're removing the strut assembly and if i take you back here i don't know if there's enough light or not but there's one bolt right here that goes through it so you're going to need to take the nut off the back and then unscrew the bolt and then there's two bolts matching right here and right here that have to be removed once those are removed you can actually just knock this whole um rotor assembly off come up here and remove these three uh, nuts and then the whole assembly will come out uh, it should be pretty straightforward now there's no reason not to use um, impact tools uh, except I prefer if you can not to use them I, uh, so I'm going to take this all apart by hand so once you've got one two three four five six bolts out um, there's a locating pin right here that goes in there and that whole hole right there and depending on how rusty your shit is you know usually one good smack will get this to come out and you want to have the jack underneath it because you don't want these wires to get damaged so now we're going to very carefully um, basically worm this thing out of here this actually doesn't look in all that bad of shape uh obviously i don't know what condition the strut is in so i compress it but it was bouncing around pretty good earlier so there we go all right so there we go we're going to choose a somewhat arbitrary 23 inches in length um, which gives us a good amount of adjustability here um, and we'll just basically see how it sits if it's just too low we can always unbolt it and jack it up a little higher okay so this only goes in one way um, as you can see we have our adjuster set to standard stock camber um, down here we got this twisted to fit and one very important thing is everything that goes back in down here has got to have Loctite. Um, and then we'll put all these rubber grommets and stuff back where they're supposed to be. Um, on some cars, I believe on the M3, this is used um, to mount the sway bar. But on this car, the sway bar actually mounts down to the control arm. So it's a little bit different design. I think it may be like a late model, early model thing. So we're not actually going to use this. But uh, it is there for those people who need it. And this, I don't remember what this is for. I think on some of the later cars, there's another sensor that mounts here. Um, but again, it doesn't get used on this car. So there we go. All in, fully adjusted. Um, we'll basically see what it looks like. Now, just as an example, I put this wheel back on. I actually set the car back down. This gap in here is about two inches. And if I bring you guys around to the unaltered side, this gap here is about three inches, three and a half inches. I measured it with a, with a tape measure. Um, so that's just to, you know, obviously I don't have to do this. I just wanted to show you guys as an example. I'm gonna jack it up and put the new wheel on it. So there it is with the new wheel. My opinion, still got way too much gap in there. So I have to lower this thing a little bit more. All right, after about an hour of trial and error, I'm pretty happy with the fitment. Um, obviously this is a full droop it's about an inch and a half of wheel gap uh, and remember the car's got to look good but really I want it to drive and handle well and here in Austin we have kind of shitty roads so I have no interest ugh, in slamming the crap out of this car so that's a good spot to be basically what it was uh, I left an inch here so I didn't move these from the factory these are basically just the spring tension tight and so I moved this retainer up until there's an inch of clearance um, from the inside lip to the inside lip and then basically tighten that down. So now I got to go and do the other side. Hopefully it shouldn't be too, too big of a deal because now we've got everything figured out. Now that the front's done, we got to move on to the rear. First thing that's got to drop out is the uh, rear shock and the convertible. There's this little cover right here. The cover pops off and then there's two 10 millimeter or 13 millimeter uh, screw or uh, nuts and then there's gonna be a big bolt at the bottom so you gotta pull that out so there we go there's a whole shock assembly out now functional shocks are supposed to rebound no rebound there's our factory beehive spring and now there's a pad up here and a pad down here i'm gonna leave those in place and we'll go get our new stuff so this is about halfway so initial measurement is one and a quarter inches from up here to this silver ring so we're just going to match the other side to this uh, and basically see where we sit. Now if you use the pry bar like I did and damage this, make sure you uh, flex it back. The next thing we got to do is reinstall the shock, which is not too hard. just requires a little coordination. The only other thing was these shocks, 
I had to unscrew them almost all the way. Basically left like maybe half a dozen threads on them so they wouldn't damage it. But they're dis like significantly shorter than uh, than the factory ones, probably by like six inches or so. So you got to jack up uh, the rear and compress the spring a little bit. So that looks pretty good. So we got an inch and a quarter spacing in there. So now we just got to do the other side. There we go. We got our back wheels on, suspension's all done. Let's take a take a look underneath in the back here. You can see new shocks are on, springs are up in there. All is good in the world. So that's pretty much it. Uh, suspension's not too bad. If I hadn't screwed up the front and had to redo it like three times, uh, I could have had this whole suspension on in probably two hours, um, maybe even less. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't really too bad all in all, and I guess we'll find out how she runs and drives. So here's the stance with the suspension set. Got the alignment done this morning. This is exactly what I wanted. We're not tucking wheel or tucking tire or any other kind of bullshit, but the fender gap is just about perfect front and rear. And the car absolutely drives like it's on rails. Um, I've had all kinds of suspension over the years, and, and this eBay stuff, it's just as good as uh, any other kind of mid-range suspension option. Um, so I would compare it to H&R Race Springs, about the same stiffness and dampening, and basically the only question now is, we're just going to have to see how long it lasts. When I went to the alignment shop today, um, running about 2.2 degrees, uh, negative camber in the front, about 1.75 degrees in the rear very reasonable the uh, the caster um, was the crossover was perfect the caster was a little bit outside of the the factory BMW specs um, and the toe was pretty much all we had to adjust we got it dialed right in and so the car goes steering wheel straight car goes perfectly in a straight line um, if you bump it it seems to want to pull a little bit to the left but that might be these used tires that I'm running um, but all in all one hand of the steering wheel um, this thing goes perfectly straight Super fucking happy. So I'm going to finish doing this paint correction work. Uh, and then we're going to take it out to the twisties. So there we go. eBay coilovers are on the car. I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Max. This is MaxWorks. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, hit the subscribe button. Uh, check out the rest of the playlist of the eBay E36 videos. And peace.